What is the truth of life? Hello, everyone. Hello, Master. For the past two days, we have talked about the law of nature. The law of nature applies to everyone. It is similar to how we experience day and night and how we eat, drink and breathe every day. We are all humans residing in the same environment and experiencing similar stages of life. Thus, all of us can see or understand the meaning of life and the cycle of life, death and rebirth, from birth to growing up. Going to school, falling in love and marrying, to finding a job, having kids, retiring, growing old and leaving this world. I say the true meaning of life is like the changing of the four seasons. Leaves fall during autumn, not because of death but to prepare for eventual rebirth. When spring comes, there is renewed life. During heavy snowfall in northern China, there's no sign of life. Everything looks dull and dry, as if lacking life. But when spring comes, the vast desolate landscape, gets covered with soft green new growth, like a pretty lady wearing a lovely dress. Yes, this is the restoration of life. To be reborn is to start again, and the cycle continues. That's about it. In reality, he's a person when rebirth takes the form of a human being. But when his life ends, he'll enter another realm and form. He'll go on to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth realm and so on. Maybe this life he takes on the two-legged human form, and the next life he might be a crawling four-legged animal. Following that, he might be flying in the sky. The time after that, he may become an ethereal being. Ethereal beings may be like a fairy or a demon, they're yet not there. They exist but could disappear in an instant. Their existence also has a purpose. It isn't what you have in mind. But this is how it is in reality. Confused, you ask, are there actually life forms like this? And I'm telling you, it's like those who've never been in the ocean who discover its many zones, from the surface to the middle to the depths to ocean valleys. Every zone has its own life forms. Those that appear to be reefs or marine plants are actually animals. Life presents itself in various forms. As Buddha says, life comes in different forms. There are womb-born and egg-born beings. What are womb-born beings? All of us here are womb-born beings. Many animals are egg-born, such as those with scales and shells like turtles and snakes. Feathered animals and dinosaurs are egg-born. They are hatched from eggs, not birthed from the womb.
There is also the moisture borne, such as moths, grasshoppers and other insects. Take for example a pool of water in a tropical region, let it remain stagnant for a few days, bugs would start breeding in it. Other times I'm not sure if they were born or flew from somewhere. Let's say you cut a melon and leave it. Within 10 minutes, you'll see flies. Some call them fruit flies. They feast on the melon. But there has to be a birth process, right? We don't see them growing, we just see them flying, they are moisture born. As long as there's water, small insects can be born out of it. Another type is transformation born. These beings are not usually seen by humans. For example, ghosts and evil spirits. We don't understand many of them. Neither can we name them. These life forms are not usually seen by the human eye. They seem to exist now and then. But they're present, we may not feel, see or touch them. But under special circumstances, it's possible to see them. It's like how we feel about aliens and their existence. Some people have definitely seen one. Has anyone here seen an alien? Not yet? Anyone seen a UFO? I have. I've not seen an alien, but a UFO, yes. It was very clear and real. I'm not saying this to make myself look sacred. I think there are certainly many people who've seen UFOs too. Photographers and UFO fanatics like to arm themselves with cameras. High-quality cameras for night photography. They don't sleep at night but instead wait for UFOs. Some people have actually captured a UFO on camera. I was lucky to meet one accidentally. These transformation-born beings definitely exist. It transforms from one form to another. It changes from being the first type to the second type of evil being. It's constantly evolving and improving, that's how its life changes and transforms. And that's about it. Thus, we've covered the four major kinds of life. There are also physical and immaterial forms. Physical forms are those that have shapes. We can feel and touch them. Immaterial ones have no physical form. These are beyond our imagination. If it doesn't have a physical presence, then what is it? Very puzzling. The materials and tools we use today have physical forms. It is the 21st century now, right? In the late 20th century, we started using wireless tools. Since the 20th century, people have been researching wireless technology, so radios and transmitters already existed. Near the end of the 20th century, in the 1990s, we started to have wireless electronic products, such as the air conditioner, telephone and TV remote control. All these go beyond using wire transmission. It was a breakthrough. Waves of light and sound, sonar and infrared light are used. Infrared light as a form of light. UV light is even stronger. An intangible substance is used to communicate information. Wireless proved more powerful. Scientists use light, sound waves and air. All are considered immaterial substances. These are what I can think of. 
There are also conscious and unconscious life forms. A question, do plants have consciousness? Raise your hands if you think they do. Half of you do while the others are unsure. Do plants have feelings? Through my observation and research, I believe they're in a simple state of consciousness. Definitely not as intricate and complex as that of a human mind. Also, trees have no limbs. They don't have the thought nor the ability to move. They aren't like those in movies where they walk and fight. Trees don't have such abilities. But plants do have sentience. I saw some grass at the East Coast Park of Singapore. I used my hands to touch it, and a very strange thing happened. Whenever I touched the grass, the leaves would close up. It was as if the grass were ticklish and feared being touched. This plant has feelings. Most plants are capable of feeling but unable to move. Like a person in a vegetative state, I can feel being touched, but I can't move. An American scientist did an experiment. He bought some pea seedlings from a shop. All were grown with the same humidity, soil and fertilizer. Amount of sunlight given was also the same. He did the experiment to find out if plants are sentient. For one group, he would praise the seedlings. They grew very well over six weeks. The peas were ready for harvesting. The plants were pretty and had plentiful peas. But for another group of peas, the scientist ridiculed the seedlings. He called them ugly and asked why they were in this world. He would use insulting words to criticize them. None of the seeds grew into healthy plants. They were yellow, wrinkly and dying. Many of them didn't survive. The seeds that were praised grew healthily. Seeds also grow well when exposed to music. So it's not a bad thing that many youths like listening to music. It can help relieve stress from parents and teachers. Stress from learning art could be relieved by listening to music. This helps you be healthy. So it's a good thing for children to like music and art. This experiment proves that plants have feelings. We generally call this sentient. So in Buddhism, we always hear the words, sentient beings. Most of us would think it refers to people. As they're capable of being romantic, speaking well and having feelings, but it's not just humans. Why are some people addicted to rearing pet dogs after 10 or 20 years with their dog? Many people find it agonizing when the dog passes on. We had someone in our village who had a dog. It was an adult dog. It was an abandoned stray dog, probably a few years old. She kept it for about nine years before it passed away from an illness. A coffin was made for the dog. She even invited all the neighbors and friends for a funeral. 
This was in the 1990s and she spent about 8,000 RMB. Not long after, her husband passed away, she spent only 2,000 RMB. His coffin was half the value of the dog's. My husband upset me. Just bury him somewhere. The dog loved me so much. Yes, so dogs are also sentient beings. I've given you some technological and imaginative knowledge. Womb born, egg born, moisture born, transformation born. Physical, immaterial, conscious and unconscious beings. Life takes on many forms and types, and the cycle repeats endlessly. Now we have a better understanding of the world, and the different life forms out there. It's a very broad category. Yesterday we talked about what my master said to me. I felt very lonely when I was young. I was afraid of the dark and feeling alone. Afraid no one liked me. Afraid that my parents or master wouldn't want me. All kinds of fear led me to feel very unconfident and inferior. So my master said, Child, how many stars do you see up there? I counted, but there were too many. Simply too many. He said, there are more, including those which our eyes can't see. There are as many stars as there are people on Earth. Would every star feel lonely up there? They're densely packed together. I don't think so. He said, so are you. You and I are together. I blurted out, Master, what if you pass away? He said, out with the old, in with the new. If I'm not here anymore, there might be more people by your side. How can that be? Why would they? I look ugly. He replied, there are certainly uglier people by your side. I realized I'd said the wrong thing. I knew I should stop thinking that way. And that was what he told me about the meaning of life. It's simple. He gave me examples like those I told you yesterday. He told me what life is composed of. The celestial being scatters the seeds of life. Those that hang in the sky become stars. Those that land on the ground become sand. Those in the forests are grasses and trees. Not a single life is alone. Life is connected. The sea and sand, and the sea and earth, are connected. The earth is also connected to the ocean and the sky. Hard to know. Think carefully. They are closely connected, right? The earth itself is considered a life, like the microbes on our hands. And here we are in pain, stress, fear. We feel timid and unconfident. For an unconfident child like you, the microbes on your hands are equally timid. The same goes for the Earth. Earth is a life form. It may feel lonely. Maybe it's enlightened and doesn't feel lonely. It has the sun and moon as companions. Right? Like fellow dance partners. It feels this could be its purpose. There's nothing in the world that is absolutely alone. I asked my master one day, what if you pass away? Talk about taking no offense at a child's babble. He said, people don't simply die. If one day I passed away, my physical body would stop moving. You could do anything to my body. I would be in the sky and one of the stars is me. Which one would you be? The one that you like the most. Really? You wouldn't know which star you would be. Due to clouds, you also won't recognize the stars. And through the process of reincarnation, 
Maybe any of the stars could be your mom, dad, master, past lover. The more I listened, the more I felt comforted. But sad at the same time. That's how our life is. I couldn't bring myself to be happy. But I'm no longer afraid of life, darkness or death. We won't truly die. Our lives are constantly repeating. Maybe in our next life, we could be a moisture born, womb born, transformation born, air born or even never born being, etc. Life undergoes cycles. To be never born depicts eternity. When I am one with heaven and earth, I am never born. To be never born is to be in a state of no extinction. A thought leads to disturbance. Letting go of one's thought leads to peace in this world. Thus, my master told me a calm dharma realm is when the heart is at peace. I asked my master what a dharma realm is. He said, it's when you've seen through all, greed, fear, attachment and suffering. You've let go of them, and you're not bothered by them. Your life will be free and at ease. No more pains or worries. So a calm dharma realm is when the heart is at peace. Dharma realm is the realm of your inner thoughts. How do we nurture our dharma realm then? I asked my master. He replied, don't have greedy thoughts. Allow yourself to get rid of greed. How do you do that? I asked. He said, by giving to others. Learn to give, offer and be respectful. In order to create sacred ground for yourself. I said, but my aptitude is poor and foundation too weak. It'll be a long time before I achieve this. He said, no, it's not like this. The moment you no longer cling on greedily, you'll have let them go. Your life will be free and at ease. I said, I don't want to be carefree. I want to be healthy. He replied, to live with great ease means to have great health. Living with great ease means having great wisdom. If you are a grain of sand, you can lie on the soil peacefully. That is called letting go of all ties. Simply interact with heaven, earth, sun and moon eternally. Fear arises from greed. Greed comes from the fear of not having or losing, thus anxiety arises. I said, Master, I'm afraid of the dark. He said I didn't understand. If no light is within, there's fear of darkness. If there is light in your heart, you'll no longer be afraid of the dark. It's called inner light. It can fill up your inner world and mind, allowing you to see everything with clarity. I seem to understand yet may not. Every time I think of what my master said, I feel it'd take a lifetime to grasp it. Trying to comprehend it in a Zen state, a middle ground of being awake yet not. Being in this state actually helps me find myself over time.
Even if I'm just a grain of sand, I've grown stronger than ever before. No longer do I fear challenges. I enjoy this feeling. Before I left my master, I remember asking him a question. I said, you told me a story once after Buddha's meditation. He picked a flower from the field. Facing everyone, he asked them for an answer. Everyone was shocked, except for one senior disciple. He stayed silent and smiled. I asked my master the meaning of this illusion. Does it mean enlightenment, as the flower was blooming? I pondered on it for days. Finally I told him my answer, I thought my master would praise me for it. He said, enlightenment, when flowers bloom, it's also the time they wither. Then why was the senior disciple smiling? Master said, the world is filled with all kinds of idiots. I'm telling you this. That was an embarrassing situation. I still don't understand the conversation to this day. What are your thoughts? Do you like flowers? No one dares to say the truth, afraid to nod. Blooming signifies the plant is about to bear fruit. It also represents the end of a journey. Blooming marks the beginning of an end. What is there to laugh about? But now as I think about it, what is there to be sad about? So the disciple said with a smile. A new life had just begun. And that's why he was smiling. So Buddha gave him a knowing and satisfied gaze, and smiled. Thus, there's no death in life. It undergoes a constant cyclical transformation. Due to our actions and karma, we become different life forms. Through transformation in the universe, the technology today leads people around the world to Saturn and Jupiter. We see different kinds of physical matter and the thickness of clouds that surround a planet. We test for water. Water means life. The world is not like this. We are exploring only one kind of life form. Not all life forms need water. This is a realization, but the wisdom and ability of people today can only explore life forms that are similar to human. There was a movie called Avatar. The place is similar to Earth. They take on a form similar to humans, with the exception of the tail. They are taller and have longer legs. But do they look like that in reality? Definitely not. It may be easier to learn and understand beings that exist in other realms. These beings are able to transmogrify themselves. Thus, they aren't easily affected by temperature change. Humans could fall sick and die, a volcano erupts and people drown or burn to death. When a tsunami hits, people drown. There are various events that kill people. If we have to die, why were we born? So in certain realms, things are not the same. They have longer lives. Their time is eternal. According to how we calculate time on Earth, a short life might be tens of thousands of years old, that is their usual life state. But it's not easy for them to be born there.
Based on the pattern of life transformation, some of them were also once humans and animals on Earth. When they've elevated to a certain level, they go to that world. So at times we see scenes and we are unsure if they're real. Like seeing your deceased elders, relatives or old classmates. You know he is dead. Yet you saw him. You really saw him. Why? Many old friends and relatives miss you. They knew they were going to another world. Their sensing capability is beyond humans, and since they are deeply connected with you, they decided to visit you. They also let you see them on purpose. When their wish is fulfilled, they'll leave in an instant to where they belong, another spiritual realm. There are different beings in that world, hence, both heaven and hell exist. It just refers to the different types. Those with better cultivation end up with a longer lifespan, less suffering and more enjoyment. Poor cultivation means a world with more suffering and torment. There's a reason for where beings end up. What's the catalyst for this difference? It lies in the different energy levels. So this is how I view the world. And this is my understanding of its current status. Where there's life, it has to undergo a cycle. To be never born depicts eternity. A calm dharma realm is when the heart is at peace. To let go is to achieve great freedom. So during our practice, I always remind everyone to be one with nature. I am the mountain, and the mountain is me. I am the tree, and the tree is me. I am the sky, and the sky is me. What else? I am emptiness, and emptiness is me. I am going one step further today. I am one with nature. I am one with emptiness. Difficult? How do you become one with emptiness? Just imagine you are empty. What does it mean to be empty? It's nothingness. You can think of the sky, right? Imagine you are the sky. Can you do that? You are the sky. Many people are very socially responsible. If I am the sky, then what happens to the airplane? You're only picturing it. It's not going to affect an airplane's route. No one is going to shoot you down. It's only a visualization. The difference between humans and animals is our vivid imagination. Our imaginations are abstract and creative. Through our imagination, we can come to truly understand the world. This is called wisdom. Armed with this knowledge, we'll no longer feel fear. People return to Earth upon death. Like in Avatar, when one dies and is buried, one returns to nature. This is the relationship between man and nature. Various elements come together which allow us to be a person. Lacking a few elements, we become a frog. Any slight variation results in a different animal. I believe the difference between apes and humans' DNA is very slight. Thus, we are one with nature. Logical people ask about the benefits of such knowledge. The benefits are recovery of one's health and liberation from suffering. No matter the worth or quality of a tree, its lifespan is longer than ours.
If humans don't cut them down, each tree can live between a few hundred and thousands of years. I am the mountain. Most of the mountains we see today are over 100 million years old. Some that were formed by lava from volcano eruptions are a few thousand years old. Jeju Island could be at least 20,000 years old. For many who have been there, you'd have seen black rocks. Those were formed from the ashes from underwater eruptions, volcanic rocks, and lava. Granite-like materials are ore from the Earth's crust. When other planets hit Earth, parts of the crust came up to the surface as big rocks. How old are these big rocks? At least 10 billion years old. So when we become a part of nature, I am the mountain, and the mountain is me. It represents eternity. It means having a long life. How would this benefit me? When our life force is not strong enough, our spirit calls out for us to become one with nature. Then, all our negative energy and illnesses disintegrate and we are replenished. It's like drawing an outline of yourself on a sandy beach. Within the outline is a cigarette butt. It's like an illness. Take it out, then smooth the sand, which is akin to healing. When nature helps with our lives, it's very easy to recover our health, gain longevity, and receive nature's energy as well as the protection of nature's spirit. It's up to you if you believe it or not. When you are one with the earth, you no longer trip over bricks when walking. Some seem to have eyes on their feet. Their feet find the only rock in their path to stub their toe on. It hurts a lot. Why did this happen? It's because you don't love this world. You are short-tempered and arrogant. When you are one with this world, you won't step on nails even if you're surrounded by them. You'll seem to have eyes all around that see everything. This helps to avoid accidents. The world is yours to use as you will. But when you don't love this world and are arrogant, you're in direct conflict with it. You dislike this world, and it dislikes you. Let's see who wins. You would get punished for this. This is a type of self-cultivation and a supernatural healing method. Try it out. Imagine as I speak. Let's try again. I'm the night sky. All the stars and the universe are me. Don't imagine too specifically. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes you wear. It is a blurry image without even a body outline. Don't think about your body. There isn't one. I am the night sky. The Earth's oceans are me. The blue sea is my life. I am the world's largest mountain range. I am the universe. I am new life emerging on Earth, heralded in by the spring breeze. I grow joyously, happily and robustly, making this world a more wonderful place. I am reborn. I am now healthier, more beautiful. And filled with boundless energy. 
I am the universe. I am one with the universe. I am eternity. I am the most perfect starry sky in the universe. All mistakes and pain can be self-healed and corrected. It's like seeing the moon, sun and earth daily. Nothing stops this phenomenon. That is me. Every star we see is a pore on my body. No worries. No joy. I am neither dying nor being born. This is humankind's best self-initiated recovery, healing and rejuvenation method. Fate ordained the coming together of several elements to form each of us. We are heaven's creation, not ordinary people. We are closely connected with the sky and earth. Through constant practice, you'll see differences between your practice as a beginner and as you progress. It's similar to practicing artistic skills. At first you take baby steps. You go from being unable to crawl to running, jumping and dancing. There may be some feelings at the beginning of practice, but that's still preliminary. As you progress, you'll experience more wonderful and easeful feelings. When you reach a certain meditative state, for instance chanting, you're sincere and focused, and chanting with mind, body and speech. Your sense of time and space will even change. In my experience, though I sat for four hours, it felt like ten minutes. Why ten minutes? It's the passage of time impressed upon my brain just before entering a meditative state. After sitting for ten minutes, I entered the state of emptiness and peace. It's a peaceful state without thoughts, consciousness or sense. How does it feel? No sense of feelings. Having feelings is still the beginner stage. No sense of feelings, but definitely not sleeping. This is close to being in a meditative state. There are multiple levels of samadhi. But once samadhi is reached, your life and wisdom will begin to change. You have no sense of time even though you've been in a meditative state for 3.5 hours. If you can be in this state for over 40 minutes once in your lifetime, you will detect a personal elevation. Suddenly, you're no longer ignorant but wise. 
Those who were fearful of the world are now full of confidence. Those who got beaten up can be generals now. They are able to fight back now. Those who got bullied are generals now. A general is not someone who likes being a general, but rather someone who feels he is a general. Those who are kings feel like a king. Thus, he became king. Why? He has the energy. Through self-cultivation, we can transform ourselves. When chanting with me, your saliva will have a sweet taste. What is it called? Nectar. Right, it's nectar. Remember that. When swallowed, it's highly beneficial for recovery of health and healing. Next, when our palms and feet sweat, it indicates a free-flowing body. Blockage leads to illness and physical pain. A free-flowing body is the first sign of good health. Next is radiant and glowing skin. Our previous chanting sessions were short. After chanting for a week, everyone's skin will look a few years younger. What else is next? There's soreness, pain, numbness, swelling. Smoothness and fineness. Smooth and extremely fine skin. Next, dryness, the opposite of smooth and fine. It becomes difficult to rub your hands. Why did they become so dry? It's one of the signs of elevation in the meditative realm. Yes, dryness and itchiness. My nose starts itching while chanting. Why? Why are my scalp and back itchy? The harder to reach, the itchier it is. How awkward. Chanting with palms together, should I start scratching? Generally speaking, don't touch the itchy part. The itch means the energy is blocked. Once energy flows smoothly, the itching will stop. Otherwise, it means the area needs healing. During the healing process, it may feel itchy, numb or sore. The feeling changes after a while. With continued practice, your energy sensitivity will become stronger. Your hands will become very hot. After that, my skin peeled off. Extremely rough and dry skin peeled off. It's like cicadas molting. This really happens. Practice and you'll know. You won't experience exactly what I went through. Those were my experiences and some seemed magical. We'll stop here for now. At that time, my master told me time and space feel different in a meditative state. Master told me, one day in a cave is akin to a thousand years in reality. This describes the meditative state. Why in a cave? Typically we find a quiet place to meditate, like a cave or an empty house. This is to avoid disturbance from others. Actually, to be in a cave is similar to closing your eyes. Closing the door is like being in a cave. It means to close yourself off from the world. One day in a cave is akin to a thousand years in reality. When I feel only a day has passed, in fact, a thousand years have gone by. There's another explanation. Say, you practiced for a month, but you felt only a day had passed. In actual fact, a month had passed. The energy and wisdom you received is that of a 1,000-year-old sage. Does it mean your skin is wrinkled and old? No. I'm referring to your energy and wisdom. 
I hope everyone can achieve good health and longevity through meditation. May everyone respect and love nature, heaven and earth. In turn, they will love and protect us. We will no longer be afraid of life and death. Having seen through life and death, we will become fearless and serene. When we practice with this mindset, it's a lot easier to achieve the unimaginable. Respect, love and be one with heaven, earth and nature. Being one with heaven activates self-healing. Enter a meditative state to transform life. Achieve enlightenment when you've seen through life and death.